Hey, Thomas here. Have you ever been in the situation where you and your company and your organization were looking into a cloud project or are on the way to transitioning to the cloud? And obviously there are a lot of things you need to think of, especially when you come from a pure on-premises environment, you probably have some questions and a lot of things to set up when we just think about how do I set up my Azure environment? How do I make sure it's secure? How are the ways I'm actually gonna deploy services into that? So wouldn't it be great to have some guidance um, or a framework which can help with that? And that is exactly where the cloud adoption framework for Azure comes in. So we're gonna have a look at that right now, but first let's have a big cup of Azure. So the cloud adoption framework can really help organizations on their cloud journey by providing business, people, and technology strategy. And it really is proven guidance um, developed by Microsoft partners and with our customers together to make sure that they can set up their Azure environment in the right way. There are always questions, how do I set up my environment? How do I make sure it's secure? How do I deploy uh, services to Azure so I can actually keep control and um, over my environment, but still offer the speed and agility the cloud offers to my customers and end users and my IT teams as well. So the cloud adoption framework really, as I mentioned, is around processes, people and technology. It's not just about the technology and architecture deploy. It really also considers the business value uh, you will offer. And it provides you um, documentation, best practices, templates, for example, to deploy uh, certain environments, and then also tools to actually track your progress, do assessments, um, but again, um, also making sure that your environment is secure. So the cloud adoption framework really can help with a lot of things. And especially also when it comes to, for example, building Azure landing zones to make sure that your environment has the governance um, built in. For example, as I mentioned, you want again, you want to leverage the speed and agility of the cloud, but you will still want to keep control. One example here, for example, when you start with Azure and you give access to your developers, to your IT professionals, they can go out and deploy to basically every Azure region around the world. They can go out and deploy the largest MV2 series virtual machines, which have a couple of hundred cores, terabytes of memory and drain credit cards within seconds. And so you don't want to um, just give that to everyone. You want to still have these guardrails in place. And that is also somewhere where the Azure uh, cloud adoption framework can help. Now, what is actually these, these, these proven guidance to accelerate the cloud journeys of your organization mean? What is in that? And so there are seven basically uh, parts which we look at and, and even more um, in, in certain cases from defining the strategy um, with the business justifications to also um, have a look at what are the expected outcomes to actually plan um, the deployments to plan like the cloud adoption in general, making your environment ready to like, make sure you have the landing zones in place, your Azure environment is set up in the right way, you have role-based access control, security patterns in place and so on. And then also actually then really start adopting the cloud um, by, for example, migrating existing applications, but also if you build new applications in your cloud environment. So the cloud adoption framework is not just for organizations which are migrating to the cloud, but also if you start a complete new environment um, and build your own application, um, the cloud adoption framework can help with that as well. And it doesn't just stop on this journey, right? It's a it's something which is an ongoing process. And so it also has information about govern your environment and keeping it control and also how you actually manage your environment. So you can make sure that, for example, all your systems are up to date, you can easily make changes um, to it. So again, 
The cloud adoption framework is a great place to start. It's obviously free and you can find it in the Microsoft documentations. So here we are uh, on the Microsoft documentation page. You can find it here. Um, and you can see here we have documentation for all the different Azure services you can use. We have links how you actually can get started with your Azure environment. But then you also can find here very prominent the cloud adoption framework. And if you click on that, you will find the overview page for the cloud adoption framework and actually uh, what you can do with it. And you can see here again our different uh, methodologies here uh, when it comes to strategy, plan, ready, migrate, innovate, govern, manage, and organize your environments. So you can actually go in and check out all the information I just covered, like what is the cloud adoption framework. Um, but then you can also have a look at like different scenarios here. So for example, if I want to get my Azure environment ready, we have things like Azure landing zones, which are predefined environments uh, and guidance basically to build these um, architectures, which you can have a look at. And we will do a whole other video on that as well. Um, you can also find some best practice information here. So you can actually go out. So I want to, um, prepare my Azure environment and get ready. And it covers basically all the points you need to uh, think of, right? So from the Azure fundamentals, thinking about the different Azure concepts, um, creating the initial subscriptions you need, um, what happens if you like build a multi-subscription environment, um, all these different information here, uh, which you need uh, in terms of building the structure. We're also looking at networking, obviously, like do I need, for example, hybrid connectivity or do I just need to make sure that the application in itself is secure? Identity and access control, different storage um, technologies, databases, machine learning, and then also cost management because you want to keep control and make sure um, that you actually get a benefit out of this. So that is, for example, one thing uh, you can go through. Again, here on the left side, you can actually see uh, more information about that. Now, you're probably watching this video because you already have started your cloud journey and you're figuring out, oh, this is this is hard uh, and I want to like see, okay, what do I need to do? Now, again, the cloud adoption framework, if you haven't started it and you're about to start, this is a great way to absolutely do that. Go and start and read the cloud adoption framework, go through the different steps here. But no worries, if you have already started, you can still use the cloud adoption framework uh, as a help and actually like move, merge what you already have, your existing stuff into like, like the proven guidance we, we developed here with the cloud adoption framework. Now we also have a great tool here. Uh, we have different tools here, for example, where you can then also go out and depending where you are, you have like um, governance uh, benchmarks and assessment tools to actually find out um, like is your environment like doing the right way and we have a couple of more so for example here um, we have different assessment tools you can look at uh, we have one for the Azure well architected review so you can look if, if your um, workloads are configured in the right way or architected in the right way but what I want to show you here really is the cloud journey tracker so this really helps me um, if I go back here to the overview of the cloud journey tracker. Um, this really helps me to actually go through and do an assessment of my like cloud journey, not just of my cloud environment, but really where are am I in my cloud journey? So what I will need to do is I would actually go in and create an assessment name. And then for that, I would then create different milestones. So what then will happen is I will get a couple of questions I will need to answer. It takes around like 15 uh, to probably 20 minutes to answer all these questions. And so you could go and say, okay, uh, what are these questions? The first couple of them are around your strategy, uh, but then also about planning, readiness of your environment, um, governance and the management, how you do management of your environment. Now, this is great. Uh, again, I'm not going through all of that right now, but I already prepared um, one of these assessments. So I created one here, um, the Thomas Maurer Cloud Journey, and I did create a milestone uh, for that for April 2021. 
Um, and you can see here, I can then open up that milestone. And I could go in and obviously change things. I can also create a new milestone. It's good to have track where we are in our cloud journey. And when I fill this out, uh, I can actually look at the guidance. So that is very interesting. And this will now help me and guide me to the different uh, places where I still actually need to do some investment, right? So first of all, I'm doing like whatever I answered in the question, obviously I'm doing pretty good, but there are, there is still room to, to improve. So you can see here on the left side, I have some, some weaknesses when it comes to readiness and govern or, or have some potential here, if you will, the set, but still the same thing here also for strategy and planning. So if I scroll down here, I can then actually find more information, recommendations, um, through these specific, uh, stages. So for example, in the ready, ready stage, I will then get the links, um, and actually the, the recommendations, what should I like invest a little bit? So for example, I, at one point I got asked, do I actually just migrate lift and shift all my applications one by one? Um, and I said, yes, that's the only thing I do. So we obviously encourage people to actually go out and probably have a look how they can modernize or even rebuild their applications. So here, for example, you can see here, I have a recommendation how to learn how I can rebuild my apps um, so they can take advantage of, for example, native Azure services instead of like building all these um, virtual machines or migrating all these virtual machines to optimize uh, my workloads, not just in terms of cost, but also scalability, performance, uh, and many, many other considerations. And again, this is like what, what it is about the readiness stage, but we can also see here there are also some recommendations in the um, strategy phase. So I can have a look at how I actually manage operations. How do I improve performance uh, of my workloads? So this is a really great tool to actually keep track of your cloud journey. Um, and again, you can then also export this uh, and go on and you can cover this for all the different cloud projects you have, for example, it's probably if you're a consultant and working with different customers, you can create one per customer. If you are the customer, you can create one for yourself and track the different milestones. Um, so it's a really, really great uh, tool you can leverage. Now, if you want to know more about the cloud adoption framework, I highly encourage you to check out uh, the cloud adoption framework on Microsoft Docs. There are a couple of links in the description to bring you to the right place. Um, I also recommend that you check out uh, Microsoft Learn. We have different learning paths and learn modules um, around the cloud adoption framework where you can learn how actually to use it and leverages, what are the strong things. And then also, if you, want to have external support within your organization, you can reach out to, for example, Fast Track for Azure, the Azure migration program, or also find partners, uh, which you maybe already work with, um, and actually find out more because they are also working on this and working with the cloud adoption framework. So I hope this video was helpful. Um, and you got an overview about the cloud adoption framework and how you can take advantage of this proven guidance for your cloud journey. And I hope I see you in the next video.